Hello there. My name is Bruce. Oh god, what, what the hell's that? My name is Bruce from Brankus Creations. Thank you for joining my live stream. It has been a little while since I've done this, and I am starting with some technical hitches. I just went there to go and use my microphone and realized there was no sound coming out of it. So I am now using the microphone on the camera up here. Bear with me just a minute and I'll see if I can get this one working. Change it over to... Ah, that's it. It was muted. Okay, so you guys, you guys have to help me out here. Uh, this is a Rode Wireless Go 2. Uh, and it has a base station, which is just here, connected to the computer. And, and here. That's it here. And it will... That's it there, you can see the little... VU meter going blah, 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 and you can see it's saying showing two. There's a two there that's saying that I'm using microphone two. This little base station will actually work with two microphones and what I do is I have one on the charge while I'm using the other one so I've always got the ability to go from one mic to the other. Um, it's a really really good little mic. I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, I've got lots of good things to say about it. And of course this you can also connect up to your phone so you can do wireless audio capture using a phone and you can connect it up to a video camera with a little audio out cable-y thingy there so I could connect this up, use it with my normal video camera. So it's it's a very good thing. Uh, I, I, I really have nothing but good, good things to say about it. Um, but what we are doing today, we're going to do a little experiment uh, and I need you guys to help me. So. Um, there is, I have, the other day I bought this microphone. It's really cheap. It's, it's, it's really cheap. It was like $20. And I'm just curious to know how this sounds in comparison with this, uh, whatever it is, $200 Rode Lavalier microphone. The Valier. So we'll start off with the Rode. Okay. And then, and I'll just get all you guys to, to then give me the feedback on what it's like. Okay, so this is, at the moment I'm using the internal microphone on this little wireless thing here. So there's a little microphone there. Now we go to the lavalier mic. Bing. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now this is designed so that you can actually use these a fair distance away from your mouth. They're actually, they are made that way. They're made so you can stick them on your shirt and you don't even need to face them to your mouth. So that's the, um, <clears throat> this is the lavalier mic. So the lavalier mic for uh, the Rode one. Now we're going to try, try the $20 one from JCAR Electronics. All right, what do you think? What do you think about the $20 one? How does it sound in comparison? I would uh, be very interested to know if anyone says, my accent changed, oh my goodness. How did you do it today? Um, I would be very interested to know if people sort of think this is better, worse or otherwise, how does it go if I have it a bit of a distance away from me? Uh, <clears throat> so, interested in feedback. Uh, internal mic on go to clear and crisp, Lavalier Road clear and crisp, cheap ass JK mic clear and crisp, but more popping. Poppy, poppy, pop, pop, more popping. Okay, that's pro <laughs> probably. Yeah, I mean, it probably wouldn't happen if I had it stuck on my shirt here. So, more popping and rubbing with the cheap mic. Okay, yeah, yeah. I suppose that's that's going to happen. All right, well, let's go to the uh, crackle, crackle. Let's go to the uh, road one. We'll, uh, we will proceed. Oh crap. Um, just think. Uh, so watch your hard peas, that's what they say when you're recording. Watch your hard peas. Okay, let's put this in the pocket. 
And on the shirt, it sounded a bit muffled. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so this is where it is going to reside for the rest of the stream. Uh, I hope it sounds okay. I went to go use this microphone for recording something the other day and it wasn't making proper contact when I plugged it into the phone. It was my phone. It's, there was fluff in the bloody lightning socket. Uh, but yeah, it didn't make proper contact and I recorded the whole thing thinking I was doing it with wireless mics, but I was actually doing it with a microphone built into the phone. Very frustrating because you don't find that crap out until you're editing it later on. Anywho, for anyone who uh, may have seen the video that I released last week about my visit to the Australian Computer Museum, uh, it was it was good fun. It was good fun. Um, yeah. Crap, what did I just do? I think I bumped something. Ooh. So, um, all right, let me let me do my normal thing here and just say hello to a few people. So I'm going to say hello to Steve, hello to Jay, hello to Drake, to the Tech Doc, to Apple's Anonymous, to Retro Techie, uh, Laid Life, Laid Life. I, bet, I think that's it. Um, sharks. Um, Joseph is here. Joey, hello, Joe. Uh, I still haven't done the SC30 board, but I will. I will. I probably should do that today, but it's just boring stuff. Uh, I just think it's going to be a bit dull for the live stream. Uh, I'll try and get that done today. I have had a slight, uh, let's say, slowdown. Uh, hello to Evan. Hello to Will. Um, yeah, so anyhow, <clears throat> on uh, Tuesday, I got... Uh, I tested positive for COVID, so I've got COVID, so yay. Uh, Jack68k, hello there. <coughs> uh, for me, the symptoms have been very much like a cold. Um, not too bad though. I've been just trying out different uh, treatment methods. I uh, uh, tried a lot of alcohol last night. That seemed to work fairly well. I think I nearly killed it. Um, Daniel, hello. I didn't eat anything this morning, so I'm going to have a drink instead. Ah, lemony freshness. Okay. So, um, hope you are boosted and it phases through the system quickly. Yep, all boosted. Um, uh, there's really not much else more I could do other than probably wear some masks a little bit more I've been pretty good with the masks and then I just got a little bit complacent recently and sort of like ah stuff and I don't need to put a mask on no idea where I caught it I've got no idea what the incubation period is so I've got no I don't know what the time frame is but I noticed the reason why I became aware of it is I lost my sense of smell I was uh cooking up some Malaysian food and reheating it. It's the stuff that we had bought from a Malaysian person. And we were reheating it and there was a soup, like a spinach soup. Um, and I was just curious to know what it would be like. So I just opened the lid up and went, what does it smell like? It's got no smell at all. Yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm not particularly interested. It, doesn't, it has no smell whatsoever. And my wife's like, what? Are you serious? I could smell it the minute you took the lid off. And that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was an indicator because I know I, I'd heard someone else say that they, uh, they knew they had it because they lost their sense of smell and exactly the same thing happened to me. And so when I lost my sense of smell, I said, I think I probably need to take a test. And I had done my last rat test recently because I had had a cold. So we went out and bought some more rat tests and then I went and did it. And sure enough, boom, up came that line. It's like, okay. So, yeah, hmm, yippee. Oh, that's good. That is good lemon freshness. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, there are pluses and minuses. Um, for the most part, the, the no smell, no sense of smell isn't a major thing. Um, it gets me when I'm cooking because I love to cook. I do all the cooking in the house because I love to cook. And, uh, you know, when you're there, I don't know, frying up some garlic and some onions and stuff like that, and you're getting no smell from it whatsoever. It's kind of like, ah, oh, takes all the friggin' fun out of it. Um, but I, um, uh, I am starting to smell things again now. So yes, last, the last three days, 
days. I've just been getting little hints of smell and it's just gradually getting better. Um, what can, I, can I smell anything? Um, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, Lemon Solo fixes everything. It does. It does. You've got to work hard to be a solo man, apparently. You've got to take the lead and make the others follow or something like that. I can't remember. Um, so, oh, actually, yeah, that's a good thought. Fluxes have a smell, don't they? Shall we try a stinky flux? There's a stinky flux. Here we go. Here's some stinky fluxes. This is uh, V2. V2's got uh, a pine scent, apparently. So they say, I've got lots of videos on that. So let's just see if I can smell. Damn, this is fucking stuck in there. There we go. There we go. Come on. Yeah, I can smell it. I can smell it a bit. Yeah, I can smell that. Yep, definitely getting my smell back. Yep, definitely getting my smell back. So yeah, I'm going to be able to smell the fishy caps. So that's great. Uh, so anyhow, uh, last weekend had a very interesting... Last weekend? Was it last weekend? Or was it the weekend before? I've got no idea. I think it was last weekend. Rudy is here. Hello, Rudy. Um, Adam McGee is here as well. Um, uh, sample 88. Yes, I've got that. Something. It's up here somewhere. Um, so, I, yeah, I went to the Australian Computer Museum um, and I took my recapping show on the road. So they basically, I, they, this event was going on and it's one that I've been promising to go to for a long time. Um, and... Uh, and I said, well, look, do you want me to, do you want me to do some recapping while I'm there? And he's like, yeah, sure. That'd be great. I'll set you up with a table. Like, yeah, okay, cool. So I packed everything up, packed up my soldering, not this soldering iron, I didn't take, take this one. I've only got one hot air station. So I took my hot air station. I took my spare, well, one of my spare soldering irons. I took my solder, my flux. I took a, a thingy to stick on my head to, to get some magnification. Didn't take the microscope for obvious reasons. Mind you, I'll really freaking missed it um i took uh i kept caps um yeah various bits and pieces so took it all there set it all up um did a little bit of recapping did, i recapped two boards while i was there i did what i consider to be a pretty substandard job and it really made me miss the microscope uh, and what what we're actually going to do today, one of the first things we're going to do, Enzo is here, hello Enzo. And Starbuck Tech, did I say hello to you? I'm not sure. NK Morpheus is here, Ryan Joffrey is here. Um, I uh, am going to have a look at the work that I did last weekend and see if it was any good, because, pff, you know, this is going to be looking at it under the microscope for the first time. I might find all sorts of problems with it. Um, <clears throat> took all of that there and then you took back COVID. Yeah, I, 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 does anyone know what the incubation period is? I mean, I know it changed. Look at this. Look at this. I know it changed with the latest strains of, uh, of COVID. The incubation period became really short. So I think they were saying like, you know, like, like, you know, three to five days or something like that, you know, from the point you're exposed to when you, uh, you have it. I've got, but I've got no idea. I really, I'm absolutely freaking clueless as to the incubation period. So I don't even know. Wait, see, I went last Sunday, I went to markets. I went to like a flea market. There were loads of people there. I mean, it was really crammed in some stages i wore a mask for some of it but you know it was i was like this far away from people it's it's at some stages but uh, i tested positive on tuesday so sunday i started feeling symptoms on monday night so sunday to monday night that's only one day i'm not sure that's a pretty short incubation period so the markets would be the most likely spot in terms of exposure to people but yeah i just the, the time's not quite right um uh, anyhow, but anyhow, I thought I was going to get away with it. I thought I was going to not have it, but nah, nah. Max is here, hello. Any idea why an 800k floppy drive would keep spinning its eject motor? I have the driver part and the eject gear is fine. I do know exactly what can do that. If you've got an 800k drive connected to, well, it depends on the computer you have connected to, but if you have it connected with a, well, there's a few things that can do it. First of all, it can be the sensor the little sensor that detects that the drive is off. So let's grab a floppy drive, shall we? This is what we do on this show. This is where help people. Helping people is my name. 
It's not really, it's Bruce, but uh, here we are. There's a floppy drive. This is a crappy, not working one, but it can still, we can still do some demonstratory things with it. So let's uh, change to a top view camera. Ah, hello, chickens. Um, okay, let's change to a top view camera. Oh, I've lost my microscope. Why have I lost my microscope? I'll just check that. I'll, I'll just, we'll just confirm that. No, microscope's working. So we just got to go here and find out why the scope. There we go. That's better. Okay. So here is a floppy drive. Ta -da! Now what we have here are little sensors and there are, this one is a high density drive. So we have three sensors on here. We have one sensor to say whether the disc is in there. We have one sensor to say whether the disc is right protected. We have one sensor to say whether it's high density disc or not. So three sensors on this one, 800K only has two sensors. One sensor to say whether the drive is, disc is in the drive and one sensor to say whether it is right protected or not. Now what can happen is the sensor can get stuck down or stuck in the closed position when, um, Oh, is it? That's uh, 1,000 pennies for your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Rudy. Rudy, I am going to give that there place, a special place on the, uh, on the stream. Uh, I'm going to just make it so that it fits in here. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Now we can move that there. All right. So, um, so what can happen is that se the sensor that says there is a disc in the drive can be accidentally closed. So what I would be inclined to do is get a multimeter and go and check that sensor to see whether it's appearing to be, you know, closed. And then of course it keeps trying to eject. The other thing that can happen is if it's an 800K drive, depending on the computer you've got it connected to, you might be using a cable with a red line, a little red, um, what do you call it? The, the, this is not a, a floppy drive cable, it's a SCSI cable, we can still demonstrate it. Here, here's a ribbon cable, and then you've got the red here, and the red indicates that's, I think, pin one. Uh, if your uh, floppy cable is red, uh, it might need to be yellow. The yellow cables have one pin cut. I think it's pin 20, but don't quote me on that. They have one pin cut. And the symptom of using the wrong cable can be that it just keeps ejecting over and over and over again. So there are two things to look out for. Max, uh, I hope they, that is of assistance to you. Uh, okay, thanks again, Rudy. I am now going to hide this here. Bing, like that. All right. Um, okay. I need to speak to Steve. Steve, let me know when you're back. Oh, look at this. This, he promised it. He promised it. He promised a super chat of 99 cents. He said that if I live streamed, there was 99 cents in it for me. He's a man of his word. Oh, I love that lemony freshness. Um, I also want to thank you for um, a video you added to your Plex. Thank you very much, Jay. I mentioned it yesterday. And uh, yeah, uh, so thank you for that. Um, so, this blade is Canadian $10, it did. No pennies in Australia either. Five cent coin is the smallest. This is true. This is very true. Five cents, five cent pieces. I mean, you can still transfer funds in single cents if I'm doing, if I, I don't know, buy some petrol um, at a uh, petrol station, which is what Americans call a gas station. Um, I, uh, and I ring up, I don't know, $97 and 13 cents. I can still pay for that, uh, with digitally, you know, with a card and pay for 13 cents. But if I go to pay for it with cash, they're going to round that up to 15 cents. So yeah. Okie dokie. The switch works just fine, okay? So then the next thing I would be looking out for is that cable. It could be uh, that you are using a cable with the red stripe rather than the yellow stripe. See if you can find a yellow stripe cable among your computers somewhere and try the yellow stripe cable. Um, I know, they're, you, yeah, they're in pluses and things like that. I think mainly, Mac pluses. Uh, constant eject thing, turns out the cable was loose. There we go, there's something else you can check. Where am I? I'm just going to hide this now. 99 cents. It got way too much air time for 99 cents. 
Um, okay, what have we got here? Uh, that's, that's okay. We've got a mess, that's what we have here. So, let's have a quick look at the Macintosh 2CI that I recapped on the weekend. Uh, this is one that's battery damaged, so I'll be really interested to see if it works. I, ha I took nothing with me when I did the recapping last weekend. I took nothing with me that would allow me to test the thing. So no testing has been done, but I'm pretty sure there are some damaged traces that might, might need to be repaired, but I didn't take any trace repair equipment with me, and I would not want to attempt trace repair um, without a microscope. Um, and that. Uh, OBS version 28 has some nice new features. Uh. Uh. Canadians also call it a gas station. Well, there you go. See, we don't call it gas. For us, when, you are, when you're talking about gas, you are talking about um, something like a, a gas. Uh, whereas petrol, I realise that petrol uh, uh, becomes gaseous before it gets ignited. It gets mixed up with air and becomes a gas and then gets ignited. But it comes out of the Bowser in a liquid form. So, yeah, it's not what we would refer to as gas. So, um, so yeah. Um, <coughs> anyhow, um, glad we got that sorted. So anyhow, yeah, they're called petrol stations, fuel station, you know, service station, servo. Servo is probably the most Aussie um, slang term uh, for somewhere where you go um, get petrol in your car. We go to the servo. Um, Okay, yeah, liquid petroleum gas. Mm. Yeah, LPG, um, yeah, that's right. And of course it comes out of the, the bottle in a gaseous form, even though it might be liquid in the bottle. It's liquid because it's compressed. I'm not even thirsty, it's just it tastes so nice I keep drinking the freaking thing. All right, so let's have a little look here. Had a few technical glitches with the microscope cam scope camera last time. Let's hope we do not have the same this time around. Uh, we've got a nice little view of the ROM select there. Okay, and let's change across to the scope view. Yay! There we go. Look at that, ROM select. Um, you have the option on this to use a ROM uh, sim or use the ROMs that are soldered to the board. And with this little jumper on, it's telling it to use the ROMs on the board. This has got some battery damage near to the ROMs. I tell you, this is, when someone sent this to me, and look, I, in hindsight, I understand why they did this, but this person sent this to me, they said, I've got this Macintosh 2CI and it's had some battery leakage. Okay, can I send it to you for repair? Yeah, absolutely, I'll have a look at it, we'll see how it goes. They sent it to me, it sits in a box for a while because I haven't had a chance to get to it. I finally open up the box. It's still got the battery in it. And I look at it, what? Why didn't you take the battery out? I mean, of course, I know why. It's because the battery was fused to the holder. I had to literally just rip the whole thing off to get it out. Um, mm, Microscons. Mmm, yummy. Hungry. Yeah, very few servos, um, yeah, the term servo comes from service station, and of course that's the idea that you would <coughs> have a place that not only does, um, sells um, uh, petrol, but also uh, services your car. And of course these days, you probably only, maybe only, I don't know, 10, more than that, maybe 20% of, of petrol stations still have a, you know, <coughs> car servicing facility there. Certainly a lot of the ones around here do. Um, a lot of the ones here, you can still get your car fixed them in there as well. Um, this is a great Septandy stream. Stuff Septandy? Um, what, did, what did Tandy even sell computer-wise? I mean, I don't know. I mean, in this part of the world... Um, you know, sort of early computers, early 80s computers were probably more driven by Dick Smith Electronics out here. They were 
they were the main um, Australian sort of um, electronics reseller. We did have Tandy as well, <coughs> but I for the life of me couldn't tell you what sort of computers they sold. TRS-80, does that sound right? Is a Tandy TRS-80? I think that's right. Yeah, oh, hang on there. There he comes, Joe. They were the first to market with the TRS-80 best Apple and Commodore. Beat Apple and Commodore. Yeah, 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 cool. I mean, look, <clears throat> my very first computer was a VZ200, which is the same as a Laser 200. It actually used the same uh, uh, video display unit. I think the video graphic graphics display, GDU graphics display, it used the same chip. So they look very, very similar. TRS-80 and the Laser 200 look very, very similar in display. Um, uh, and that, of course, that, uh, you know, was... Actually, no, it wouldn't have predated Apple, but, you know, I mean, Apple still would have had their old Apple II because that came out in the late 70s. I mean, I got my VZ in the 80s, so. Coco 3... Uh, for people who don't know what a Coco is, it stands for Color Computer. So, yay. Whopping four kilobytes of RAM. My very first computer had either four or eight, I can't remember, kilobytes. And I bought a 16K expansion for it. And some games would only work with the 16K expansion. So I am rabbiting on a little bit today. Let's have a look at this board, shall we? So, we've got the replacement capacitors. Here's one here. Um, is this a new one? No, that's one of the originals, so no replacement there. Got a little bit of the rusticles going on here around the LED light, but I think it'll probably still work. And as you can see, fair bit of corrosion around here, but I don't actually see any broken traces. Uh, and this is the ROMs here. I mean, you can see a fair bit of corrosion on these little, um, what do you call it? This is like JTAG Jumper 24. This is where they do testing and stuff for these. But I, these all look good. This ain't too crash hot. Um, I, I, I'm, I'll accept that. Um, I, the, the, these aren't meant to be green. Um, but we all just... God, these tweezers are crap. Look, look at them. Look at that. Look. What good is that? Oh, and there we go. There we go. They are no longer tweezers. Tweedle 1 and Tweedle 2. Okay, well, that was bound to happen. That's why they kept on going bad, because they were falling apart. Goodbye, tweezers. Let's get some better ones. Ram socket is garbage. Easy, tiger. Come on. It's not very nice. Um, I will probably need to replace this because I think these are gone. It will make a little bit... Oh, I see. Is that bank, eh? Yeah, it's Bank A. I don't think you can start these up without RAM in Bank A, so I'm going to have to replace that. That's a bit of a poo. I don't like having to remove these. They're not fun. There is no fun in removing a RAM socket. Ever. 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 Um, I may end up having to use my little preheatery boardy thingy. But I won't use that during a live stream because it has a tendency to sometimes trip the circuit breaker. And if we do that, my live stream will come to an end. And I don't want that. Not yet. Ah. I am so freaking hungry. I should have had some lunch. I was just worried about the stream getting started too late. Okay, so. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Right. Now, let's have a look at some caps. Here's one I replaced. Here's one I did earlier, and as you can see, it's a little bit crooked, and I did that crooked because I didn't have my freaking microscope. So, take it easy on me, man, but I did look, oh, look, I did do some, um, uh, I did some, uh, what do you call that? Um, UV mask. I did mask it up a little bit. Let's see if we can straighten this a smidge. Uh, I think this side needs to be straightened. No, it's just, yeah, that's straight. That's straight. Shush. Shush. It's straight. Okay, we've got another one here. This one's reasonably straight. I'm fine with that. There we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. Got a little piece of something in there. What's that? What is that? There we go. That's a sound chip there, by the way. Sound chip one, sound chip two. Left, right. 
Well, it might be. Yeah, it is. I did. Look, left sound. Right sound. That looks okay. There's a bit too much solar there, but that's okay. Not super straight either. But... That'll do. Sort of balls. Yeah, I always get sort of balls. Okay. Oh, now this is the area, this is the zone. Oops, I better not do that. Oh, the mouse clicked and I might end up accidentally stopping the stream. Okay, so this one's a bit crooked. I was, um, when I was doing this, I found, uh, I replaced this, because it was a bit ugly. I removed it and cleaned it. Uh, but I'm sure I found a busted trace here somewhere. I'm going to have to clean this up and have a look for it. Can't see anything at the moment because of all the goop. Got a little goop here. Let's drop some flux cleaner on there. Do. Okay. Do. Do, do, do. What's that yellow I see? I think you'll probably find it's a resistor net. A Bourne's resistor, um, no relation to Jason Bourne, um, and I think you'll probably find that sort of, that's typically what the orange ones are. <clears throat> Have I mentioned about multimeters today? Have I mentioned how important multimeters are for doing this sort of stuff? Doing repairs, doing diagnostics, you need a multimeter. Not just any multimeter but a fully featured multimeter. You want a smart digital multimeter, auto ranging, nice clear screen, and you don't want to pay too much, do you? So what's the best thing to do? Go out, grab yourself a Kaiweetz KM601 multimeter. Links in the description, great price, lots of features. Gonna to want to get a Kaiweetz KM601. If you don't have a Kaiweetz, you don't have a Kaiweetz. That's my new uh, advertising slogan. <laughs> Excuse me, I have COVID. I mean, I really do have COVID, so sorry. A bit coffee. Cough, cough, cough. Yeah, we definitely got a bus of trace there. So let's clean him up and fix him. Cook him up and eat him. <clears throat> and I should also mention, while we're chatting away about all things thingy, um, I would like to welcome on board a new channel sponsor. Well, certainly a new product endorsement. And you will find links in the description for this one. Has anyone here ever heard of a product called Clean My Mac X? Or 10, that's probably X. Um, it is a pretty darn amazing product. Install it on your computer runs there in the background and does all sorts of awesome stuff. The sorts of things it will do, it will be checking for malware. Uh, it will let you know if there are old cache files, old you know files taking up space on your hard drive as your hard drive starts to fill up and Apple's just happy, you know, the Apple operating system is happy there, just filling up your hard drive with more and more stuff. <coughs> Clean My Mac X, you can launch that up and can say, hey, look at all this space being used up with stuff you do not need. If you install an application and then you decide you don't want that application anymore, you chuck it in the trash. You think it's gone. Well, guess what? Clean My Mac will actually come up and say, hey, you just deleted an app. But guess what? You didn't delete it all. Would you like me to do the rest for you? Yes, please. Boom, 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 boom. It removes any trace that the, that app was ever there at all. So, Clean My Mac X. Links in the description if you want to uh, want to grab it. It is a uh, subscription-based model, and it is fantastic. In particular, if you are like me, and you like to keep your older computers running longer. And you know what? If you use Clean My Mac and you decide you don't want it, just uninstall it. Simple as that. There is another product out there, which I won't mention. A lot of people complain about it, because once it gets installed on your computer, it's almost like a bit of malware in there. 
And I know what that application is, and the great thing about Clean My Mac X is it can remove that for you as well. You install it, it'll go, guess what? You've got this garbage on there. Shall we get rid of it? Boom. It's, uh, it's an absolutely fantastic product. So Clean My Mac X, links in the description. David Starbuck, hello there. I promise you that it does a lot more than Conflict Catcher. Geez, Conflict Catcher's going back a long way, isn't it? Macs don't have malware or viruses. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Geez, the other day, I, uh, I uh, got a file from a slightly shady location, I might say. But I got hold of this file, <coughs> and I went to go fire it up, and then just immediately, boom, Clear My Mac X just comes in straight away. This file contains malware. Would you like me to remove it? Yes, please. I can do without that on my computer. Just, just did it instantaneously. Um, Hassle-free. Great product. Uh, just checking to see which thickness wire I want to use. Uh, this is the thickness I want. So let's use this. So I am going to be doing trace repair now, and I do that with... Um, oh, God, now this is the really thin stuff, I think. That's the 40. What's this stuff? This is the 34. Yeah, I want the thicker stuff. Um, I, uh, I use enameled wire. Uh, it's a sort of wire that you would use on an electromagnet or on a... Uh, 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 what are those things called? A coil, an inductor. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I do apologise for all the flemminess. I do have COVID at the moment, so I have a bit of uh, flemminess and flemminess, and it's not nice. Um, um, so, all right, I got to ask. I got to ask people this. This is going to be the question for everyone. And we're just talking about having old files on computers <coughs> that keep getting transferred across from older computers. What about email? What's the oldest email that you have access to? I'm not talking about tucked away on archives or something. If you were to sit down in front of your mail right now, what is the oldest email in your mailbox? I'm just really curious to know. I'll see if anyone is, is on the same uh, level as me. I'm sure, knowing you guys, you've probably surpassed me, but I would like to know. I'd just be curious to know. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, come on, Michael's Workshop, that's nonsense. Nobody believes that. Got to be at least a little bit believable. There we go. Doo -doo. Fixing up some traces here. Need some trace repair for you and me. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Will I bend it over? Or will I start to get in? I think I'm going to bend it over. <laughs> there we go. Looks good to me. Oh, it's all off camera. Cool. Cool. Love doing off camera repairs. It's teach people so much. Did I not cut that? Did I not? There we go. Uh, Oz Retro Comp is here. Hello there. Right, so 2003 models, 1997, uh, 1994, 2004, just checking. So the question asked was what is the oldest email that you have access to in your mailbox? We've got here. First email from personal account was in April 2001. So we've got 2001, we've got 2004. 
We've got early zeros. We've got 1994. Uh, delete anything older than three years. Well, come on. You need a paper trail, don't you? Uh, using the interweb since 1994 on Windows machines, uh, no less, and never have picked up a virus on malware. Just got to use common sense. 1997, I'm going to print out of an email. 2003 is my oldest email. I've got saved emails from 1998. Oldest is only from 2015, 2010. Uh, 2004, maybe 2007, 2004, 2003, mail and a BBS does not count. Uh, okay, so the oldest one that I've got access to is from 1996. So uh, there are people there that have uh, uh, that go way back, but I'm clearly on the uh, on on the cusp, on the edge. I'm annoyed I don't have older actually. Because I've been using email for longer than that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so we've repaired this little trace. We're going to test that now with our Kaiwitz KM601 multimeter. Let's check there to there. Come on. I've just got to clean up, clean off these pins here. They're a bit crunchy, so I'm not making good contact with the uh, multimeter. Well, what? What? Did I go to all that trouble and still have a busted trace here? Uh, let's get the. Uh, I'm going to have to do that again if that's the case. We don't want that. But I think it's what's going to happen. Get my toothbrush here. Got nice, fresh, new toothbrushes now. And they are rich, rich toothbrushes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that is a that is a, uh, a, 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 a a fine. How do you do? And I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to do it again. So we're going to do it this time. So it goes all the way to the pin. So that it's not useless. Useless, I tell you. Wow. That is gone. Damaged. Look at that. Wow. Just completely lost the trace when I removed the uh, wire there. <coughs> oh well. This time I'll do better. Charlie's here, hello there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my wife got a new iPhone the other day. She got a 12, sorry, 13, 13 Pro Max, 512 gig, something like that. Sure is fancy. Oh, it helps if you got tweezers to do this sort of stuff. Then you reckon? Jeez, I did it so much better the first time around, but I did it wrong. Didn't do it better at all. I did it badly. It it, it seemed to go well. But then it just uh, it just didn't uh, didn't actually do the repair later. Okay, there's that. 
and then and then we do that look at that how pretty is that Uh, yes, they are going to announce a new one in a week or two, uh, uh, a week or so. Uh, don't, don't. Let's not talk about that. Um, the problem is that she needed a new phone now, not in a week or so. So, you know, that's that. Can't be helped. Um, life sometimes has other plans for us. Uh, what we want and what we get. Now, having said that, she upgraded from a 10, uh, 10X, 10XS Max, I think that's right. So it's a very significant upgrade for her. A15 chip, three cameras. I'm pretty damn impressed with it, I have to say. Crap's on mine. Okay. Just checking things. Oh, actually, look, I just saw someone press the like button, and for that, I appreciate it. But for those who haven't pressed it, just a quick reminder to smash that like button. Might have to do a new one of those one day. Using the same one for quite some time now. Quite a while. Quite a while. Um, okay, so let's just check this. Uh, we're looking much more, much more better. More, more better. More, more better. Right. So that was the trace repair that I felt would need to be done. I was even able to see that that trace was gone even without my microscope. Um... What we got going on here? That don't look too crash hot either, does it? Look at that. Look at that garp. And garp. It has an ool. Let's just check it with the old multimeter. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, well, we've still got continuity there. So that's nice. Should we see if it fires up? I mean, I have a problem in that the RAM sim is completely cactus. So, RAM slot, so I'll probably have to remove it. But we can at least see if it gives us a sad back chime. Zoom out. Cool whip. Cool whip. Pie isn't pie without cool whip. Any other Family Guy uh, viewers out there? Got to love a bit of Family Guy, I tell you. I watch Family Guy a lot. Probably too much, really. I wonder what we're having for dinner tonight. I'll have to ask the missus. What do you want for dinner tonight? Would you like me to cook something? Or are we going to Uber eat it? We can't go out because we've both got freaking COVID. Can't go anywhere. We are required by the government, by law, to hang out at home until Wednesday next week. I can go outside on Wednesday. I have to say, it's times like this, I'm glad I have a backyard. Where I can go out and I can say hello to my chickens. I go out and I say, Hello chickens and pigeons. Stupid freaking pigeons. I hate those freaking pigeons. Hungry Jacks by Uber Eats. Mm. I do quite like Hungry Jacks. 
I had some uh, last weekend. Was it last weekend? Yeah. I wonder if I'd be able to, I mean, I wonder if these would actually work in the state they're in. And of course, what what's the state going to be like underneath them? I mean, if we've got corrosion happening on the top here, there could be corrosion underneath this. I mean, I really should take this off, regardless. This has got to go in the ultrasonic as well, of course, of course. Right. <clears throat> Let's just see if it fires up, and I haven't exactly done a lot of inspector but we'll fire it up. It's quite chilly here at the moment. Uh, where I live in Canada, they have just removed isolation requirements. So they are reducing the isolation requirements here. They're going from seven days down to five days uh, in oh, about a week's time, I think. Um, but there's still isolation. All gone. Patrick is here. Hello, Patrick. I didn't want to raise pigeons. It's not my intention to raise pigeons. They raise themselves. <coughs> Annoying things. So, this is a Macintosh 2CI. One of the things about the 2CI is it has a soft power circuit. And what that basically means is you can switch it on with the keyboard or the little soft press button on the back of the computer. Um, now, one of the things that often happens with these computers is the soft power circuit goes on the fritz, because here, because caps, because corrosion, this is the soft power circuit hanging out here. And what ends up happening is it gets corroded and then soft power doesn't work. So you get the computer, you go to switch it on and it doesn't work. Interestingly enough, the computer may still work, it's just not powering on. So. What I do is I have a, uh, a power supply which will bypass the soft power circuit. So we just need to plug in the speaker, which is up the front here somewhere. There it is. So I'm going to plug in a speaker. Now I expect a sad Mac chime if, if I get any noise from it because there's no RAM in the thing. Uh, Justin is here. Hello there. Uh, Jay was asking me about the RBV chip for the 2CI the other day. Have you sent it? No, I haven't. I have been very slack on sending stuff out. Um, I did a big batch of delivery things uh, a couple of days ago, but yeah, I'm I have been a little bit slack. I've got to actually, I've got to grab it off the two SI board that I've got up there. We might even be able to do that today. Um, so, so uh, power supply. That's what I said, isn't it? This is the same rig that I can use on a 2SI as well, because they use the same plug, and I think it might even be the same on a Quadra 650. Um, I think, but I'm not sure. Oh, and a 2VI and a 2VX. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is that meant to be plugged in here? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Everything appears to be plugged in. Oh, we'll give it a crack, eh? Okay, so this is um, the power supply that I have. It's an ATX power supply, like this. It's even got an on-off switch, how cool is that? And this will allow me to force power into it without using the uh, $39. $39 for this power supply. I think it's a rip-off. Um, so uh, this will allow me to bypass the soft, uh, soft start, so we'll be able to tell whether the computer works even if the uh, soft power supply is shot. Uh, soft, soft start, what do you, whatever you want to call it. Okay, plugged into the power, I'm about to switch on the on button, okay? And then we'll see what happens. You ready? Three, two, six. Well, we definitely got a crackle. Let's see what happens when I press the reset button. Yep, I can hear it. Okay, so we've got partial workage. I've got a light here, which is always good. Uh, and that, of course, means that I'll have power. I'll have power coming out of this, this here. I'll have 5 and 12 volts. A um, little bit of heat coming from the CPU, which means that it's powering the CPU. That's nice. Um, let's just 
I need to get my ear closer to this. Here comes my big fat head. Kind of blotchy and red, aren't I? Okay, so we've got partiality. What if I whip this off and stick a ROM sim in? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Huh? You that? Anyone want any of this peanut brittle? Yes, please. I love peanut brittle. I'm not a big fan of peanuts in sweets, but I do like peanut brittle. So I've got a, a Rominator ROM sim here. Um, and I should just put this here like that. And let's just see if it starts off using this ROM here. I've typically found that if there's a problem with these ROMs, it won't let you work with this ROM either. It's just, well, I've just found that, but who knows? Let's give it a whirl. Same again. Yeah. Okay. So we've still got work to do on this one. Fair enough. It's to be expected. Um, what did I want to say? Uh, just in case anyone's looking at this and thinking, hey, look, Apple got lazy. They forgot to stick a chip in there. That's the parity chip. Um, if you have a chip there, it means that your uh, computer uses parity RAM. Now, um, funny thing, I've never, ever seen a 2CI with that chip there, even though I know that they exist. Never freaking seen one. Never. Dave is here. Hello, Dave. Uh, have you got the right speaker ohms? It, even if it was out, um, it, it would, I'd still get some noise from it, other than a pop. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I have got the right speaker ohms. These ones, I think, use... These use an 8, I think. Or a 16. I don't know. Uh, how about that, then? That's an actual 2CI speaker. Let's try that. Just in case anyone wants to... Uh, Wants to question it. Oh, yo, 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 yeah. Um, probably no clock signal, you know, because there's a real mess here. Down here near the batteries. I'll have to go and have a look around there. Okay. Got even less with that speaker. That speaker might be shot. Yeah. No. 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 All right, so let's start having a look around and seeing if we need to repair some things. We'll start at ground zero, which is uh, where the battery damage is. Um, we'll have a look with that with the microscope. Microscope. I'm hungry. <coughs> Parody chips are for the birds. <laughs> Scope view. There we go. All right, so let's have a look around here. God, these boards are big. They're so annoying. You're annoying. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. It's annoying. All right, so battery. Now, we're missing a diode here, but I'm really not concerned about that because that's just to do with the battery. But there are, do appear to be some other problems here. I mean, look at that. Look at, look at, look at. It <coughs> looks very unsavory. Get my scalpel, grab it by the blade. Nothing wrong with that. Whatever went, nothing ever went wrong grabbing scalpels by the blade. Yeah, look at this creeps. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. It's cleaning up all right. Yeah, good, thanks. Oh, actually, there's some crap on the other side on this one, too. I forgot about that. Okay, that's that's going through. This real-time clock chip looks like poo. I might remove it and clean it and put him back on. So let's just whip him off. Not peppermint gum. Uh, the, uh, based on things Bruce has said, along with a couple of pieces of public information, I have, uh, to a degree of certainty, 
determine where Bruce lives. Well, you, yeah, I, I, I'm not particularly secretive about that sort of stuff. So um, it's, yeah. Can, have you looked at, look me up on Google Maps? So can you see the great big tree in the backyard? Here we go. Okay, that's my little clock chip. I'm going to whip it off. We're going to clean up all the mess down here. <coughs> this is going to need a fair bit of cleanage. Angular momentum, hello there. That soft power circuit right now I have two. That will not turn off via software. What a pain. Yeah. I love the CI. I do love the CI. I have uh, I have a CI, and it is one of my favourite Macs. I have uh, a Radius Rocket, 68040 Radius Rocket in it, which I have mentioned on my live streams before. So for people who watch many of my live streams, you would know that already. Um, I... Um, uh, one of my first jobs, not my first, but one of my first jobs, when I was about 17 years old, I think I was, I worked at a studio, a design studio, uh, that was also a pre-press outfit, so we did bromide for, um, you know, pages of magazines, and, <coughs> excuse me, with a Linotronic L300 image setup. And um, back in those days, the most powerful computer that we had in the place was a 2CI. And I've got to tell you, I developed quite a fondness for that machine back then, because it was just like, it's the duck's guts. It was all the power, all the power. And it was one of the ones that I really wanted to get in my collection quite quickly. I uh, hunted around and I managed to get a few. I ended up uh, <coughs> I ended up with two perfectly good working ones. I ended up giving one away or well, swapped it for a 2CX because the guy had two 2CXs and I had two 2CIs and it just made no sense. It gave us an opportunity for us both to have a 2CX and a 2CI, which is what we did. And I even sent him the box because I hate freaking boxes. <clears throat> when someone's selling something and they say, hey, I want more money because it comes with a box, I'm like, yeah, I've, you give me the box, I've got to find somewhere to throw it away. So you keep that box. <clears throat> Once again, anyone just joining, I apologize for all the coffee flemminess, that is because I have COVID. I have the Rona. All the young people of the, of, uh, around the world are uh, doing COVID these days. It's very popular. <coughs> okay, here's a chip. Let's clean it up. So I get this board out of the way while we just clean up this real-time clock chip. Now, I do actually have replacements of these. I think I have replacements of these. Am I? Should I just put a new one on? What do people think? I mean, it's still reasonably good by the looks of it. What do people think? Huh? Clean this one up or put a new one on? Huh? Uh. Oh, crap. Putting a new one on is looking like a good idea at this stage. Oh, actually, maybe I don't have spares of these. I think I might have spares of the older ones. We'll see. Incidentally, these little real-time clock chips aren't just a real-time clock chip. They also store the PRAM, the parameter RAM, the information about your mouse and your time and your different settings and all that kind of things and stuff. 344S0042. Let's see if we have one. Let's see if we have one. Because that will dictate 
whether I use it or not. Uh. I probably have one in my little bag of goodies from Kai. Kai was incredibly generous and sent me all this stuff. Because I think it's the same one that you use on a two on a on a classic. Um, what are they? Nope, not those. SE30 sound chip. New, new. What are they? They're things. Cool. Good. Good to have things. Ah. Four six seven five. Come out. SE30 RAM. What the? Ah, I think this is them, and I think these are the. These are the dip ones, not the. Three four three double o four two, maybe. Apple eighty four eighty five. I've got a sneaking suspicion that's it. I think they're the same. They're just in the wrong shaped container. So let's see. Come on, friends. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, yes, let's have a look at uh, the little goodie bag from uh, from Kai. Nope. So he probably sent me ones for an SE. Nope. Must build these chips. I don't have a two effects to run them on, but I really must one day do it. Right, let's see if I can steal one off something else. Uh, it's got to be the same clock chip that's on uh, a classic, isn't it? Uh, let's find some classic boards. Ooh, actually, I've got a, a dead 2SI. I can probably steal it from that. Just hang on a sec. Mind you, that's probably dead as well because it's right near the uh, um, right near the thing, next to the thing, by the thing. You know the thing. Uh. No, that's a that's 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 not the computer at all. No, nope, that's a uh, six ten. Quatra, quatra. Uh, what do we got here? That. Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. 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 That's not it. Uh, well, that's dead as. Oh, that's got one on it. It's, oh god, it's missing a lot of pins. I guess we won't be using that one. Uh, what do we got here? That's a nope. Hang on. Maybe? Nope. That's a nope. How's everyone going, by the way? Everyone feeling good today? Um, that's a classic two. Nope, not that. This is a 2SI, but boy, there's nothing on it. This has got to be one of the most stripped 2SI boards ever. Uh, come on, man. Mm, there's very little left on this one, so we shan't be using that one. We shan't. We shan't. Well, it's this one. That's a classic too. That one looks perfectly good and functional and working. And what's that? This is a classic, colour classic board that says Brancus. And here's another colour classic board. And here's another colour classic board. And here's a classic board. Oh, this real-time clock looks all right. Actually, this board looks all right. I don't think this is a donor. Mm-hmm. Well, this one's been rated. This one's also got a real-time clock chip. Well, I've taken so many off this one, I may as well steal it. What do you reckon? Yeah, everyone agrees with me. <clears throat> I do need to find that 2SI board, though. Because I've got to take stuff off it. And... S there goes the can. And send it to... Do uh... you know what I should have done while I was off doing that? Should let you have a look at the chickens. It'd be much nicer, wouldn't it? I like looking at chickens. Angular momentum super chat and 
whoops, shebang a bang, thank you. I don't know if I ever bought you a super chat, but thanks for everything you do. Not only useful, but entertaining as well. Well, thank you very much. That, uh, that means a lot to me. Very nice of you to say. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's see if this is the same real-time clock chip. Uh, 343S0042. Three, four, four. S double O four two. What do you reckon? We'll just try it. We we'll just check it on, check it on there. No one will know. No one will know. <coughs> right. Need something that might resemble a heat shield. Shall we use a wooden heat shield today? Why not? Wood actually makes quite a good heat shield, believe it or not. And I, yes, it does burn, but it still heat shields shields heat quite well. I can spell it. There we go. So, whip that fella off there. And we'll pop it on here. Ow! This is hot. Amazing. Amazing how it gets hot like that. Right, so let's just have a quick look with... What am I looking for? Scalpel. Pull, pull. There it is. And just make sure that oh god, that's really gooey. Gooey. <coughs> Parmesan makes an excellent heat shield. Could well do. It smell nice too, wouldn't it? Nice bit of cheesy smell. Cheese. I like cheese. Who said oh, I don't like cheese? I love cheese. It's clean, delicious energy. I love cheese. I love cheese. All right. Let's pop this, uh, this little chip on. This one that I, uh, I did sort of burn my fingers with. I don't honestly think this is going to be the reason why the computer won't start, but it's something that needed to be done, so we've done it. Rudy's off. Good night, Rudy. Uh, thank you for joining. I know it gets a little bit late here. Heat makes an excellent cold shield. It does indeed. Um, tweezers. really don't feel like I've got my brain in gear today. Um, and for that, I apologise. In case anyone's watching this and thinking, geez, Bruce is off his game today. I feel the same way. Doop, 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 doop. Nice bit of drag soldering there. Might need a little bit more flux. Just whack about a quarter of a Rossman on there. That's our measuring system for flux. Got a nice big bridge going right across all the pins there. Pretty cool. Just one bridge left. There we go. And now he's gone. Is Steve here? Steve, Steve Mac 84 Steve. Steve, are you here? We need to talk classics. <coughs> it's clean, delicious energy. So, Oz Retro Comp, you know the reference to that, clean, delicious energy. 
It's an Australian thing, so no one else is going to get it. It's uh, Tony Martin, I think, wasn't it? Doing Kim Beasley. <clears throat> Who said I don't like cheese? Uh, no one said that. All right, let's have a look at the ROMs, because ROMs can always be the cause of problems, because you want the computer to do something, make some noises, you want it to chime, you want it sad Mac chime, happy Mac chime, whatever. Any of that stuff we need ROMs for. And if we're not accessing the ROMs, we're not going to get anything. And I really do not like the look of this chip here. How yeah, bad is he? I have known people who don't like chocolate. I'm not a big fan of dark chocolate. But I love milk chocolate. And I'll tell you what I don't like is frickin' Hershey's. I uh, tried some of that once and it's the most disgusting chocolate I've ever eaten in my life. It's like eating a candle. Looking, <clears throat> let's flip him over because I, 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 there was definitely some corrosion on the other side of the board. Ow, hurt my finger. Ow. bad as I was expecting it to be here, but never mind. Now, where was the gunk? There was some gunk on the back here. I saw it. I thought, I thought, I thought. Oh, super chat here from Osretrocom. I'm paying money. <coughs> Cadbury's is the best chocolate. Yep, you'll uh, you will get no argument from me there. That is damn nice chocolate. Ooh, look at this! Look at it! Ew! Damn, I think this thing needs to go into the ultrasonic. What do you reckon? Look at that. Look at... Mmm, I need a toothbrush. Sorry, I was not really... Uh, much of a Rex Hunt uh, viewer. Um, that's the fishing guy, yeah? <coughs> Cadbury we uh, get in the US here, I think is different from non-US, maybe. The Cadbury chocolate that we get in Australia, Cadbury is a... Um, a UK company, but the Cadbury we get here in Australia is actually made in Australia. Um, so there's a very good chance that our Cadbury is different to other Cadburys. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Right, let's see if we can clean this up and maybe reuse that lonely little capacitor. Steve really has gone, hasn't he? I was going to help him. He left. Can't help him if he's not here. He's got a wobble on a Macintosh Classic screen. 
And I think ultimately what he would like is he would like me to just give him a, oh, that's the sphincter valve, you'll need to replace that. But unfortunately, it's not the case. The wobbles can be caused by so many different things that uh, uh, it might... Uh, he, there are lots of things he needs to potentially try. This really is poo, isn't it? This uh, capacitor. I've got a dead TCI board somewhere. Yeah, this is mine. This here, uh, I'm just going to do top view for a second. Top view. Top view. There we go. Hey, by the way, don't forget to smash that like button. <clears throat> this monitor that I'm using at the moment is on its last legs. I'm probably going to end up having to replace it. Um, it's going okay for the moment, but there's something wrong with the power cable. I think it's the power socket in the back, and I'm not sure if I could be bothered fixing it. Okay, so this is a 2CI board here. It is mine. Mine. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's in beautiful condition. Uh, the reason why it's in beautiful condition is because this one was stored in a box for most of its life. The case that it was in is in beautiful condition. It's the case that I use for my, the, my working one. But it had a battery explosion and massive amounts of damage here. Massive. So it's sort of become a donor board, and this is probably where I'm going to get the bits that I'm going to go send to. Uh... So what do you need? What do you need, Justin? Are you still there, Justin? Justin, what do you need? Justin, Justin, what do you need? What do you need, Justin? What? What? What do you need? What? What? Swim RBV. I'm, I'm sure that was one of them, so I'm going to please stick a bit of tape on that one. RBV. That was one of them. But there was another one too, wasn't there? Was it the VDAC too? I can't remember. <coughs> I've got a huge gouge in this monitor here. I managed to scrape the front of it. Oh my God, so Hershey's make Cadbury chocolate over there? Oh, that's frightening. I mean, Cadbury cream egg, one of the nicest freaking things, man. I love it. They're so sweet. They're so rich. A lot of people go, oh, no, they're too sweet for me. Not for me. No way. I mean, there's, you know, they're a big bundle of diabetes, but yum. Yum. Okay, so, uh, new bus transceivers may also be needed. So, uh, I need the uh, the RBV chip, okay? Um, these these bus transceivers here, these two, you want these as well? Jeez, you're going to raid me of everything, aren't you? And wasn't there also, like, something maybe this one here this vdac or something i don't know i'm not sure steve is here hello steve hello steve um so steve um problem with the macintosh classic eh got a bit of a wobble eh what's all that about eh um oh god this one's in pretty crap condition as well come on i think it's still better uh, C134. I'm going to grab it. Um, so, here's the thing. Wobbles can be caused by lots and lots of different things. That's one of the problems that we have. It's not necessarily, oh, that's a wobble being caused by remove that thing there. Um, I would suggest that what you're going to need to do is... Uh, Give it a really, really good clean. That's a starting point. Um, and I also think you need to replace the little uh, little chip, the one that you can't seem to get at the moment. So that's pretty useless. Uh, I can't really help much more with that. I think this one's worse than the other one. It's sticking though. Um, come 
on. Spasmo. Do this better. Do better. That'll do. That's connected. It's going to look too crash hot, but it's connected. Uh, <laughs> so, still looking around here just to see if there's any chaos, confusion, corrosion. Oh, that's a nice one. I like the way that's jammed in between two chips like that. Oh, you can't see anything. Sorry. Fluff. Yes, biscuit. We eat when in this particular part of the world where we say biscuits, we're referring to what Americans call cookies. And when it comes to biscuits, what Americans call biscuits, well, we don't really have those, really. Uh, I mean, other than at places that sell uh, American-themed food, they're sort of like a savoury scone sort of thing, really. Do do. Do, oh, I'm going to try it out. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but, you know, as I've said many times, and I'm going to say it again, when you're doing stuff, you have to keep testing, because otherwise you have no idea what actually fixed it. <clears throat> you, go, you go do 10 things, and then it works, and you go, great, which one fixed it? I don't know, one of the 10. One of them. Can't be having it like that. Jay, you still here? <coughs> or have you gone off and done something else? I think it's important that you are here because you are the one that bullied me into this. No, bullying's not the word. I had to come out here and do repairs anyway, so. All right, let's get a spooker. Spooker. And we'll switch them on. God, I feel like we're so close. Not working. How do you feel about that? We get a power light. I mean, look, power light. Power light. A good thing. No, the biscuits are more of a texture of a, like a scone, in my opinion. The ones that I've had, I have had American biscuits because there is a there's a place here called I think it's called Wing Shack or something like that. It's run by a few Americans and they sell fried chicken and uh, biscuits. Um, It, yes, it does need RAM and a mcg, uh, but here's the thing. Um, I'm not even getting a sad Mac chime is what I should get. So uh, without RAM, yeah, I would. I should be getting a sad Mac chime, but I'm, I'm, I'm not getting that. I can stick RAM in it if you like. I don't know how well it would work because um, the RAM slot's a bit... <laughs> I've got another 2CI here, another recapping of a 2CI, and this one, the other one's in far better condition. Remind me never to do recapping without a microscope in the future. Just don't wanna, don't wanna. Oopsie. So there we go, this is for Adam. Put some RAM in there. See what it does. Crap sticks. Oh, I didn't connect up the spoiker. But up. Uh, 
Bing. It's a steer dead. I've got to keep looking around. We know that there's going to be some busted traces here because just of the state of it. Um, we're just going to keep looking. <clears throat> and then a little bit later, we can get a little bit more uh, diagnostic uh, you know, getting out the, uh, what do you call that thing? Good night, Bruce, and everyone have a great Labor Day weekend. Well, thank you very much for that, Patrick. Um, thank you for joining. Have a good night. Sleep well. Um, I'm freezing my food cold. Was that Zoolander music? It was actually a song called Rocket by Herbie Hancock from 1980s. Now, as to whether it was used in Zoolander, I could not tell you. But the song is called Rocket, R-O-C-K-I-T, Rocket. And it's by Herbie Hancock. And I think it came out in about, I don't know, I want to say 83, 84, something like that. Um, God, we've got to stop talking about food. I'm so freaking hungry. I could eat, I could eat a horse. You know what I really need to do with this board? It's just, it's obvious. I need to stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, that's, how many times have I had a board that I've just put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and then it freaking works? Happens all the bloody time. I bet you that's what it needs. Bit of ultrasonic cleaning. It's gonna need a lot of time in there. Because uh, look at all this. Oh, you can't see it. You can't see it. The video for that song is wild. I would agree with you. Actually, as a youngster, when I was a little fella, and I used to watch that film clip with all the little robots and all the robots and stuff, it used to freak me out a little bit. Uh, I was, you know, I was probably, I don't know, 10, something like that. Yeah, someone there with the Googles. Can they look up Herbie Hancock Rocket and tell me what year it came out, please? I believe. I believe. Nineteen eighty three. There you go. See, I was eleven. <coughs> I do believe we may have another trace break here. I was checking this one with my car wheat. <laughs> well, keep in mind that uh, I'm not rating parts from this one to give to you. I'm rating parts from a, a much deader one. And in all honesty, the deader one might be fixable. Well, it probably is fixable. I've just, it's, it's zillions and zillions of trace repairs. But you kind of have to ask yourself sometimes, in particular when I've already got one that works, is it better off giving its life to bring other ones to, you know, back into the world of a living? Rather than, you know, sort of... Um, and if we manage to save your 2CI with it, then it's, 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 you know, a worthy sacrifice. Oh, come on. It's raining. Let's see if we can see the rain with the, uh, the chicken cam. Because this is under a gigantic tree, the rain doesn't, uh, get to the chickens as much as uh, you know, sort of uh, as badly because they're, they're fairly well sheltered by a gigantic fuckus. It does share some characteristics of, of uh, Axel F, but I can tell you one thing. Uh, if you were looking at a whole chicken and egg thing there, 
Herbie Hancock's rocket predates Axle F. So if anyone's wanting to do any kind of like a who, who made who type thing there, up there, up there, up there, I can tell you. Your cereal. I mean, it really doesn't look that bad. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, all good. Uh, what about this one? I'm um, so cereal. That's good. It's good. It's good. It's very good. I like it. It's good. Yeah, I'm gonna put this one on the ultrasonic cleaner. It's the best thing for it. I have this great big cleaner. It's made specifically for boards like this crazy not to use it. <clears throat> Do you get six eggs per day? No, I don't at the moment. Uh, I'm getting probably four or five a day. Because uh, of the colder weather. Um, when it warms up as we start heading, and it is spring at the moment, but it's cold and wet. Um, but when it's uh, really, when we really start getting into the warmish part of spring, uh, we'll all start seeing six a day. Um, are you talking about Herbie Hancock? Um, yeah, Herbie Hancock was fantastic. My uh, <clears throat> my dad was a huge Herbie Hancock fan. Um, all right, let's have a look at another 2CI, shall we? Because this one's giving me no joy whatsoever. Uh, oh, actually, you know what we should do? We should recap the cash card. Cash card. Cash card. Got a cash card. Oh, crap. Look at that. That's not right. Someone's had a go at removing this, I think, by themselves. Uh, what's uh, the uh, capacity of that? Uh, that uh, capacitor there on this uh, on this board here. Uh, that capacitor there. That one there. I've got no idea. Anyone know? The cash card. I know that one of them. This one here. This is a 22 microfarad 25 volt. Pretty sure I've got those. I'm going to check my container of caps. Huge me caps. Uh, there we go. I've got two containers of surface metal um, uh, tantalum caps, and this is container number two, and crap, it's not here. Say so what? So 22, 25 volts. Got no 22s here whatsoever. Come on. This, come on. Oh. 22, 22, 22, 22, 22. Do I not have them? Have I ever had them? Why am I asking you? I've got 33s. 33 is not 22. Look. 33. 33. No good. So are they both 22? What does my shirt say? It says, Estaguas. Ah. It is basically uh, Star Wars with a Spanish accent. So, it's it there. It's Star Wars. Um, it is, there is actually a, 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 a sh, uh, like a, it's a kind of parody of Star Wars called Star Wars. Uh, so, yeah. Piffle. So, what I might be... Okay, so can anyone confirm for me that on the 2CI cash card, there are two caps of the same size? They are both 22 microhero, 25 volt. I mean, I can look in here because I've got a second one. I'm just being lazy. I'm, ex I'm expecting you guys to do all the work. Isn't that just mean of me? I mean, look, here's another one. Here's another one. Please answer the house of moth. What's you go? Uh, speaking of, when do I get some parts so I can get this board out of here? Yeah, when you live stream. I'll get him. 
All right. Yeah, we'll whip these parts off today. So, yep, they're both 22, 25. Both of them the same. I texted you too for no good reason. I should check my text. See, Jay has a direct line of communication with me. It's very important. It's very important to have a direct line of communication with me and with Jay. It's got to go both ways. It's very important because we're very important people. Um, I haven't got my phone. I didn't bring my phone down here. What an idiot. Idiot. Gosh. Why did they change it to green? I mean, why did they change the icon for messages from blue to green? I just don't get it. Oh, thank you very much. Steve sent me a photo, I appreciate that. And, what? Well, hang on, Jay has sent me a message of me. What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Every now and again, Jay just records my streams and then sends them back to me when he finds funny bits in them. So, I have no issue with that. <laughs> Tina, eat your ham. Hey, vote for Pedro. I freaking love that movie. God, I can just... I love that movie. <clears throat> Tina, eat your hair. I love the... Um, um, what's his name? Uh, the brother. I can't remember his name. I'm just really bummed right now. Uh, okay. What have we got here? I have got some electrolytics. We have a new student. Now, what did I say? It was 22.25. 22.25, 22, What? Have I ever recapped one of these before? I just don't seem to have caps for it. There's only one other place I can look, and that's in my Amiga stock. I haven't done an Amiga in a long time. Ah, excuse me. Oh, I've got 2235s. That'll do. These are expensive. These are uh, really good quality caps, by the way. Top, top quality. Top quality. So, we've got a 2225, and then we've got a 2235. It's a little bit smaller. Oh, you can't see that. Scop view. Oh, Jeremy. I'm doing a quiz, so I'm only half paying attention. Which half? That's a, I think that's an important question. Well, we have a new student. Ah, oh, yeah, Dana's there. I love that. I mean, I don't think, I don't think um, Dana's actually seen the movie, but he's seen the scene that I'm referring to. <clears throat> so anyone here who may or may not know, oh, thank you very much, Jeremy. I do appreciate the super chat. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> In, uh, there's a TV series that came out a long time ago called uh, Strangers with Candy. Uh, and it's got, um, uh, what's her name? Um, Amy Sedaris, Paul Danello, Stephen Colbert, and a couple of others, I can't remember the names. And I loved the series. The whole thing was, <coughs> every episode ended with a moral, but it was always the wrong moral. So every, every time... Um, the main character, um, Jerry Blank, sort of, she had some sort of realisation. It was always the wrong one. And I just thought it was fantastic. But anyhow, there was a... <clears throat> they made a movie of it, and it, it had its moments, but it, 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 I don't think it was as funny as the series. But uh, in it, um, the character walks into... The main character walks into the school and uh, she's new and she walks into the classroom and she hands this piece of paper to the teacher and he looks at the paper and he screws it up and he throws it and he goes, God damn it! And then he's just quiet for a minute and then he turns around to everyone and says, we have a new student. And it's, it's going to lose a lot with my translation of it there, but I'm telling you, it is just one of the funniest things. I crack up when I see that. Crack up.
Strangers with Candy was weird, but oh, geez, I loved it. it. It just totally appealed to my weird sense of humor. Loved it. Loved it, I tells ya. Just trying to protect the serial number when I remove this um, cap. So I'm sticking some sticky stuff down here. Had enough of this rain. How about you? Had enough rain? <coughs> We're apparently going to have another wet summer. Won't that be wonderful? Here we go. Let's clean these up and stick some new ones on. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah, not not much of a bushfire risk here at the moment. Uh, the last we've had uh, was it La Nina, the weather event, and it has just meant we it has been cold and wet, and very un sort of Sydney-like, and I don't like it. I like the heat. I grew up in a hot city, and I'm used to heat. And I don't like this cold wetnessnessness. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. I feel like this is one of my worst live streams ever. <clears throat> I really know how to sell them, don't I? So, interesting thing about this. This is a Macintosh 2CI cash card. Uh, it used to be uh, an optional extra. You could pay more. I don't know how much more, but you could pay more when you bought a 2CI to get this cash card. <coughs> 2CI ended up living an incredibly long life. I mean, they kept selling the 2CI, I think, a lot longer than they thought they would. Um, one of the reasons was it was very modular. It had three new bus slots and eight RAM slots. and It was a, good, a very, very good computer. And uh, eventually, the, two, the cash card made such a performance boost to it one of the things they did to try and keep the 2CI uh, going was they um, started selling it as standard. Um, and so, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, my, the first 2CI I got did not have a cash card. The second one I got did have a cash card. <clears throat> yes, I have no idea what a works Landroid is. Um, uh, Jeremy, you feel free to let people know what a works Landroid is. Um, I'm sure it's not what Jay said it is. Um, that I think we can be fairly certain of. Uh, if Jay is correct, I, I can't imagine it would be something that you would be um, just coming out and saying like that. But, you know... Um, Roomba for your lawn. Ah, so it's like a robot mower, yeah? Ah. <sighs>
in this part of the world, I'm not sure what it's like in that part of the world, but in this part of the world, probably every, every, I'd say probably 70, 80% of lawns in this part of the world uh, are buffalo. They use buffalo grass. It's very drought hardy. Um, and of course it handles direct sunlight very well because this is typically a very droughty, very sunny part of the world. But it hasn't been lately. And to be honest, I'm freaking sick of it. So I don't normally recap with electrolytics, but I am today because that's all I have. And these are very, very good quality electrolytics with a very, very long lifetime. I do not believe this will ever need to be recapped again. I'm pretty sure it's a, they're hybrids as well, polymer hybrids, so <clears throat> pretty sure. Uh, which means that they don't actually use a liquid electrolyte. Uh, they use a, uh, a powder, a powder, so they don't leak. Now this here is another 2CI. This one belongs to a customer, and I believe I've logged it into my system. I hope I have, but I will take a photo of it just in case I haven't. Because I was in a little bit of a rush last weekend when I was trying to get all these things sent out. Look, we've got another one where they said, I haven't got my camera. Shivers. Shivers regal. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Here's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I've got... Well, there's nothing I can do, actually. This thing is so freaking clean. What the hell? My God. I reckon this one's just going to work. I'm going to just give it some power and so. Uh, put it that way. Apple. These are ap actual genuine Apple RAM. How about that? Let's have a look at the top view here. Change the views. Got to run. Latest skaters. See you, Daniel. Uh, look at that. Apple. Southland Microsystems. Hmm. Microdiodular servo systems. Uh, Bruce, can you recommend a low cost multimeter with lots of features? That's interesting you say that because yes, I can. I can recommend the Kaiweetz KM601 digital multimeter. Smart digital multimeter. What a fantastic multimeter it is. Look at it. Just have a look at it. Check it. This beautiful big screen. Great for testing things. Links in the description. You know what else there are links in the description for? Clean My Mac X. If you haven't heard of it and you are a Mac user, you should have heard of it because it is a fantastic piece of software. You install it on your computer, it runs in the background, keeping your computer running in peak condition. It helps to spot malware. It uh, lets you know when things are taking up too much space on the drive. Uh, it helps you delete files thoroughly and properly um, so there aren't little bit traces of applications if you're trying to remove an application from your computer. Um, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. So links in the description if you want to uh, give Clean My Mac X a try. Highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know what, hey, Carrie, it's, what's the weather forecast? Well, you know, expectations are very high. Jay's got very high expectations. True RMS. <laughs> my beard hairs are curling up into my nostrils. All right, let's see if this one chimes. See, this is what we do at, uh, at Brankus. When we have a computer that doesn't work, we just keep looking until we find one that does work. And then we go, yay, victory. 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 Ready? Three, two, seven. can't hear squat. You know why I can't hear squat? Because of the rain. I have to stick my head close to it. 
This one's dead too. That brings me some joy. Makes me feel like I actually need to do something. Maybe it's a problem with my power supply. Let's see, it's got this wire missing. No, it's just this red wire. You know, everything seems to be connected. You know what I need to do? I need to get a known good one and then test it on that. Uh, I mean, whether it works or not, it needs to be recapped, so. Uh, be right back. Fair enough. Uh, Shh, Joe, stop it. Don't let away this, the Kai Wheat secret. Um... Capacitor. Ah. What should I do? And I need to whip off some uh, components. We'll grab my um, donor board and we'll whip off some components for Justin because he's been so patient. Um, Is this my donor? No, that's the good one. This is my donor. And we're going to... Well, he wants the whole... He wants everything. He wants everything, this Justin fella. He wants everything. He's going to clean me out of chips. Eh, eh. So it's very interesting symptoms with Justin's uh, 2CI. Um, he... Uh, it doesn't work as soon as he plugs in uh, a monitor, which is kind of weird. Yeah, the old ultrasonic is definitely needed. What are we working on? Adam, we are working on 2CIs galore today. So I've got, this is a, a 2CI that I got. I paid 50 bucks for it. I essentially paid for the case because the board's shot. Battery damage here, lots of traces damaged. I've done a fair bit of trace repair, it still doesn't work, and I kind of got bored with it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to raid this and take some components off, and we're going to send them all the way to the United States. Uh, going to, what's it? Is it Ohio? Somewhere like that. Um, and they're going to hopefully bring a another 2CI back to life. Um by with these, one of these chips. Now these ones here, PLCC is nice and easy, very transportable. This one's here has got all these pins. So I'm gonna have to be super bloody careful with this as I remove it. So as not to damage anything. <laughs> Ask you for everything I can get. <clears throat> can you overclock a 2CI? Never tried. Oopsie. Oopsie. I just, I feel like playing with old computers today. I want to head back up to the house after this live stream and just fiddle with old computers. Maybe get a game of Civilization going. Original Sim Civilization 1. Love it. Actually, you know what I haven't played with in a while? My G3. Get a bit of OS9 happening. I don't know how I'm going to pack this. I'm going to have to pack this in... I might 
3D print something solid, some little container. Keep it safe. Is it safe? Have there been any more episodes of that House of the Dragon thing? I've watched the first episode. Is there like a second or third one yet? Anyone watching House of the Dragon? Yeah, she's coming. Can't look at the moment. At the chat, that is, but I will. Hold it up like this until it cools so it doesn't solder back down again. There we go. <coughs> so I'm going to put this somewhere so it doesn't get damaged because at the moment it's absolutely freaking pristine. It'll pop straight back on without any trouble. So I'm going to pop it here. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Ha. Okay. Yeah, oh yes, it's definitely easier for me to send the parts to Jay. And Jay is quite capable of putting these on. He is uh, a master solderer. Do... And cheaper. I think the US allows for a higher threshold before duties are incurred for a lot of other countries. Here it's a thousand dollars. You don't need to pay duty on anything under a thousand dollars. And of course the other really important thing is it's not very expensive for me to send stuff over there either. It's probably less than half the price. Uh, of going the other way. Sending stuff to Australia costs a freaking fortune. It's crazy! But going from Australia to the US is not too bad. So you want these bus fellas here? Things, thing, these things, yeah? Yeah? Smash button. Do, do, do. It, this would be a lot easier to do by just bringing out my little board preheatery thingy, but as I mentioned before, it has a tendency to blow fuses. And I would rather not blow the fuse midstream. Hey, chickens. See those two black chickens there on the left? Uh, I think the one on the far left is an Australorp. Uh, and he is one angry little bastard. Well, it's a she, actually. She is one angry little bitch. Always angry at something. <coughs> Two chips. I'm gonna fry some chips when I get, uh, I've got some par cooked potatoes. I reckon I'll chuck them in the fryer when I head up. How nice will that be? <clears throat> Don't need to answer that. I know how nice it'll be. Did I see that Ibis yesterday? 
before you fed the chooks. I sure did. I was actually um, I was actually trying to get the ibis to come and eat some food in the yard, stay away from the chickens, but they're just so friggin' timid. Um, I just uh, I love ibises. I think they're beautiful birds, and I just really would have liked him to uh, to have come and had a feed, give him some good food. There's another one. Three chips, ah, 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 ah. And then we're gonna do this VDAC. Now, is that all? Is that all we need to do, Justin? Uh, we're gonna have everything under control with these, these chips. Uh, we're not gonna end up in a situation where I sort of send this across and, and then bam, it turns out to be something else. There we go. <coughs> One chickens, but they aren't allowed in my zone if the property is under an acre. Huh. I don't know, honestly. Oh, well, we're covering our bases fairly well here, so we'll see. Jay's going to love it. He's going to enjoy it so much. He's going to love putting these chips on. <coughs> How long have I been streaming for, just out of curiosity? Over two hours. You know, I should probably stop. I am, uh, I am hungry. Ah. I need to do some ultrasonic cleaning, but I can't ultrasonic clean and live stream at the same time. It is just too, too darn loud. Now, see, this one I really thought would work, even though it hasn't been recapped. It's just so freaking clean. I mean, we do have leakage here. Uh, let's have a look at the caps under the microscope. Yeah, when are you going to sell the beige, Jay? Come on, man. Sitting on a gold mine. It's even got two FXs. Look at the gunge. How about it? Look at it. Look at it. Look. Look. Look at it. Look. Check it. Look. I'm going to just do this. Ooh, look at it. Look at, look, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look at this one too. Blah, blah. Let's get rid of some caps. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. A beep, 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 beep. Now, I don't really mind the thing bipping at me like that. I'm not, uh, I don't get as upset as, as, uh, as upset as Steve does. Steve gets very upset when his multimeter beeps at him. <clears throat> He's got unresolved issues. Oh man, that smells. Yep, my sense of smell is definitely coming back. So, um, <clears throat> who here is old enough to remember and to have grown up with and used the old Nintendo Game and Watch? Anyone? Anyone? 
Goodbye battery. Let's, shall we test it? We always like to test the batteries with our Kai Wheats KM601 multimeter. Oh, I was too late. Switch itself off. Gunge is the dryer stuff. Scunge is the oily, greasy stuff. Punge is the smelly gas. There you go. My first Nintendo was the first Game Boy. Yeah, you're, you're much younger than I am, Sir J. Zero voltages. We will not be keeping this, Maxell, because he's got zero voltages. Uh, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I am still very flimmy because I've got the Rona. One cap. Two caps. Three caps. Four caps. Goodbye caps. Is a number five cap. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I should have muted that. Sorry, that probably broke your broke your ears. <coughs> and just a second while I mute. So I uh, discovered something kind of cool the other day. I uh, uh, found there is uh, an emulator programmed by an Australian for the VZ2, Dick Smith VZ200 and VZ300 computers that runs on Android. And I happen to have an Android phone that I use for testing, so I decided to install it. And sure enough, on that little Android screen there, I can emulate a VZ200 or VZ300 computer. And so yesterday, I had a little bit of nostalgic fun playing some old games. Um, they had Frogger, which is referred to as Hoppy. And they have Pac-Man, which is referred to as Ghost Hunter. And various other ones as well. Couldn't get all of them to work. I'm going to fiddle around a little bit more, try a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, let's clean up some pads here. <coughs> These are really ugly. Really, really ugly. Look at them. How scungy is that? <coughs> scungy. Sad Mac 356, hello. <coughs> oh my goodness, viewers are dropping off down to 33. <coughs> Just a second. Sorry for the coughing. It probably doesn't help all the fumes and stuff that I'm getting from this. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, those who've been watching it the whole time, I do have COVID. Tested positive on <clears throat> Tuesday morning. It is now Saturday. I 
<clears throat> For the most part, I feel fine. bit phlegmy, definitely chesty, and of course I lost my sense of smell, which is starting to come back uh, as these uh, sticky capacitors are proving to me. <coughs> Eric is here. <coughs> Hello, Eric. Wise old wizard scolding his young apprentice. I like that. <clears throat> you shall not pass. Oops. That's a very, very delicate little pad there. Gonna get a cap on that quick smart. To protect it. There we go. <clears throat> I only ever play Doom with cheat codes because I enjoy the adventure. I don't like getting killed. Um. <clears throat> And I love having all the weapons right at the beginning and just like shooting things just with the most powerful guns and stuff. I, I, I know it's, it defeats the purpose of the whole thing, but <coughs> come on, why not? I'm a grown up, I can make my own decisions. Yeah. Sort of a grown up. Kind of a grown up. Let's have a look for a recapping guide for a 2CI. There's a 2SI, which means the 2CI will be close by. 2VI. 660AV. What? We're going backwards. What's going on here? <coughs> mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, man. 2FX, portable. There's no water here at all, found them. Okay, we need a 10 microfarad, 16 volt. We need two of them, actually. Let's grab a little fella here. So I'm putting this one straight away, and I'm doing that because this pad was starting to lift, and the cap is going to help hold that pad down. Is it that way? I'll check my guide. <coughs> this guide's crap. I need to update it. Plus on that side. Yep, that's right. One bit fever dreams. Hello there. <clears throat> to everyone who is uh, sharing their Saturday or Friday with me at the moment, I say thank you. Um, I, uh, I sort of feel like I need a, f a little win today. I haven't exactly had the most rewarding recap session. So, oh, Fridge magnet. Um, so, so here's what happened. Um, I recapped a 2CI on location at the Australian Computer Museum Society last weekend. I believe it was last weekend. 
So on the Saturday, a lot happened that weekend, which is why I, I keep thinking that it was a different weekend. It was just a very, very busy weekend. Um, <clears throat> maybe that's where I caught COVID from. Who knows? But anyhow, uh, so I was there at the Australian Computer Museum. I did a remote recapping and um, I wasn't able to test it because I didn't take anything along to test with. I tested it today and it didn't work. Not surprising, battery damage, probably lots more to still figure out. But um, So that was kind of just like, well, you know, okay, so we've tested it, it doesn't work. That's a bummer. <clears throat> and then I recapped, um, I recapped the card, the cash card. Can't test it without a working 2CI, so to that. And then I've got this one here, which is in amazing condition, really, really clean and tidy. And I thought, this will just fire up. This will just work without me doing anything. And it didn't. So I kind of want, I, I just feel like I need a chime. You know, some days you just need a chime. <clears throat> oh, spasmo. Dead set for getting how to do this. A true blue. Don't say you're gone. <clears throat> God, it stinks. Being very, very gentle with these because these pads lifted before and I don't like that. I don't. Let's get some caps on here. We've got a one, we've got a two, we've got a three. What, what movie are we talking about? Uh, come on, come on. What movie? I've got to scroll right back here. What movie? What movie? What, 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 what movie? Does it include the sequel featuring George Clooney and John Astin? What, what, what? How far back do I have to go? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I like playing the theme song to Attack of the Killer Tomatoes whenever those floating red things. Are we talking about Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? I've seen that. I have seen the sequel as well. Yo, yo, yo. I saw it when it came out. It was a long time ago. <clears throat> and I don't think I've ever seen it again since. I saw it in the cinema, of all places. It was this kind of a double features type thing. There was Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and something else on. And I can't remember what the something else was. But I'm pretty sure it was better than Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. It was a movie that had its tongue up its cheek. <clears throat> I've really got this board in an extremely um, inconvenient position, but because it's so big and I have so little space on this bench, kind of stuck.
<coughs> I was uh, I was going to work on a particular computer today, a Macintosh Classic, and then I went to go grab it and realised that I'd already started working on it. So I was like, okay, no, we won't be doing that one then. I wanted to start it off from the scratches, but we've already done it. I hate working on Mac Classics these days. They are just, every single one is problematic. Logic board's not so bad, but the analog boards on those things. I'll tell you what, someone needs to do a, um, a remake of those. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be cool if someone made a modern replacement for a Color Classic analog board? with a flyback transformer that was readily available and cheap, a power supply, an automatically switching power supply between 110, 120, 240, 230 volts, that sort of thing. Smaller, how good would that be? Okay, who's gonna do it? It's not me, bag's not me, someone else needs to do it. Goodness, I'm seeing things now. I'm losing my mind. This is the dirty one. The dirty, dirty capacitor. You dirty, dirty capacitor. <clears throat> so just anyone who is watching at the moment and I don't know, bored out of your brain, sorry, um, I'll do better. Uh, no, I uh, am going to recap this and then I'm going to test it. Hopefully we're to chime. If we don't get a chime, it's going into the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and of course I won't live stream that because it makes too much noise. The ultrasonic cleaner behind me, the one with the um, Steve Ballmer picks on it, um, that one is ridiculously loud. And so I don't want to, I, I really can't run it while I'm live streaming because I can't, I just can't even hear myself think. Um, the ultrasonic cleaner is covered in rubbish at the moment. I'm using it as a bench. So it's going to take me forever to get it cleaned up before I can even put anything in it. But, well, well, Mars Attacks was inspired by Killer Tomatoes. Possibly. I mean, it was also very, very tongue in cheek. Didn't mind Mars Attacks, to be honest. I mean, I, I, it wasn't brilliant, but it was all right. Quite, quite enjoyable. So these sorts of things go. Mm -hmm. Only ever seen it once though. I want to watch a James Bond film tonight. I still haven't seen No Time to Die. Is that what it's called? It's the last of the. Uh, What's his name? Daniel Craig ones. Haven't seen it. Want to see it. Haven't seen it. Need to see it. <clears throat> Haven't seen the new uh, Top Gun either. Really should be watching that. I've heard it's quite good. <clears throat> Uh, 
<sighs> Felino Facho, hello there. The Mad Salvi, hello. Uh, just finished, I've finished binge watching For All Mankind. Uh, I don't know what that is, or maybe I do. Is that the one that was set? I don't know, actually. No, I'm not sure. I won't say anything in case I get spoiler alerts or something, but. I know there are a sh few shows that I sometimes watch that people have said, oh, that's really good, and then I watch it and I go, I guess you have to be American. Because uh, I get things recommended to me a lot of the time by Americans. And, uh, and they go, oh, yeah, you should watch this. And I watch it and I go, hmm, maybe not, maybe not. Ah, uh, the alternative history. Yes, that is the one I was thinking of. I didn't think much of that. I got through one episode of it and I was like, I do not like it at all. Um... So yeah, I didn't get I didn't get past one episode of that. Unfortunately, maybe it got better. Yeah, I think we've got a three month because my wife got a new phone. I think we've got three months of Apple TV Plus for free. I had a year's worth when I bought, got my last phone. Uh, now they're only giving out three months. Stingy bastards. I haven't bothered to keep it. Aren't really enough shows on there. I enjoyed Ted Lasso, but that's about it. I haven't really watched anything. I started watching that one bit with the blind people. Sight or something, whatever it's called. That was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. That certainly wasn't going to keep me watching. Um, is that one about the, was it the morning show or something like that? I was, thought that could be good, but yeah, I'd never bothered to watch it. <clears throat> Postal the movie. Very tasteless, disgusting and offensive. Never seen it. I guess one of the funny things that I found about um, uh, about For All Mankind was the general premise where it was a different history. And everyone in the show is behaving like, oh, this is, you know, yeah, this is all terrible, that sort of stuff. And I'm sort of like, so? I don't care who gets there first. As long as someone got there in the name of science, great. Oh dear. It seems very quiet in here today. Maybe it's because I don't have my fume extractor on. comedy must be the worst sludge they've ever come up with apart from She-Hulk well you know I've reserved judgment for She-Hulk I um I'll give it a try um I haven't watched it but I'll give it a try I, I'm curious to know if it's any good it's probably not but I you know I haven't seen it so I can't really make judgment on it yet uh Ring of Power well they're throwing a lot of money at it let's hope they threw some money at some scripts um as long as it's got good scripts, it's got good engaging story, I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, it just seems a lot of the time they don't spend much money on scripts, but, you know, we can be hopeful. I'll give it a try. I mean, I've got Amazon Prime, so or Amazon Prime Video, or whatever it's called, Amazon Video. I've got that, so it's not, not going to cost me any extra to watch it, so I may as well just give it a whirl. We'll see. Um, expectations are set fairly low. 
I know it's going to be a great visual spectacle because they have spent so much money on it, but yeah, who knows. Any more, uh, any more uh, House of the Dragons, Jay? I'm just curious. I know how much you're enjoying that show. You know the funny thing about, you know, this House of the Dragon? I started watching it. I watched the first episode. And, you know, it's got potential. It started off stupid. It was like watching... It was like watching The Phantom Menace, you know. It was like, you know, when you watched the original Game of Thrones from episode one, you were totally engaged. You were totally hooked. Um, it was, it did such a good job with its exposition that I was just riveted in Game of Thrones from the very first episode. With House of the Dragon, the first episode, it almost feels like, I don't know, they're, they're starting off like, in politics and stuff like that and I don't know I was just and so I, I had feelings of the Imperial Senate in Phantom Menace watching it thinking isn't this meant to be a Star Wars movie um, you know that's sort of how I kind of felt um, but we'll see as I say I'll reserve judgment I'll watch a few more episodes see what it's like uh, is Moon not any good I'll tell you what the shorts made it look good I um if it's the one I'm thinking of, I saw the shorts of Moon Knight, and it's it's. I think it's quite funny, isn't it? I think it's a, a humour thingy. They took off South Park from Amazon Prime. You see, this is what's happening out here. I'm sure it's happening over in the states as well. What happened was originally we only had a certain number of streaming services, and so those streaming services were streaming things from lots of other com uh, companies. So, for example. Which one was it? Was Amazon? I think it was Amazon were playing Yellowstone. And then Paramount made their own live streaming service, Paramount Plus. And then all of a sudden these things get lifted off one service and onto another. And it's really annoying. It's very frustrating. In particular in this country, we've got a relatively small population. If they have too many streaming services, they're just going to, they're going to, there won't be enough um, people streaming, you paying for them to keep them going. Netflix, Netflix is is losing subscribers here. Um, you know, it's just crazy. Well, I've put some new caps on this. Should we see if it works now? See if we get a chime. Probably won't because it's dirty. It'll probably not do anything. But let's try it anyway. I'm going to put a speaker there. We're going to change camera views to the top view like that. And we're going to get a power supply. Which I kept plug in, wasn't that nice of me? <coughs> Next scripts is yeah, okay. Oh, House of the Dragon coming right up, thank you. Um something something dark side. Something something complete. Okay. I've got the power supply plugged in, I've got connected to there, I've got this weird cable just hanging out here for no apparent reason. Got a speaker plugged in, so if it chimes we'll be able to hear it. Uh, as I say, I give it 50-50 at this stage of it working. I don't even know if I checked to see if I did all the gaps. Check your work, I always say. I didn't today. All right, ready, city. We got a chimney. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, very good. You like the chime, yes? Everyone happy, yes? You like that? We dumped Netflix last month. So we have out here what we are, we currently subscribe to. We have Netflix, Stan, and Amazon Video. That's what we have here. Um, what are the other ones that are available? There's Binge here in Australia. There's Binge. Is Foxtel, but Foxtel, I mean, they're so stupid. They don't even have an app for an Apple TV. If you want to play Foxtel streaming service on an Apple TV, you've got to load it up on your phone and then airplay it. And it's like, get real, man. Look at your competition, you clowns. So, um, so the other ones here, you've got Foxtel, you've got Binge, you've got Paramount Plus, you've got... 
Disney Plus and you've got Apple TV Plus. I think that's it here at the moment. I don't think there's an HBO yet uh, here. Oh, I, Hulu, I think, is here. Um, yeah, so the, I don't think there's HBO here. So HBO episodes or HBO shows are playing on other ones. So HBO, I think they're playing on Binge at the moment here in Australia. Um, as I say, Amazon Prime. I've, I've enjoyed quite a lot of the shows on Amazon Prime. I, I, I feel like I've... I'm not saying I got my money's worth, but it's not super expensive. So... Uh, sticking a Blu-ray into my drive. My favourite streaming service is my Plex server. There's always something on there that I can watch. Always. Freaking love it. I love Plex. I um, I have the, a massive Blu-ray collection, and I have digitised all of them. I've turned them all into files, and I've got them on my Plex. And it's a six terabyte drive, and I love it. I love it. Yeah. BritBox, yeah, actually, BritBox is available out here as well. Um, I guess the main thing with streaming services is the ability to see the shows as soon as they come out. Yes, they will then later come out on a Blu-ray. You can always buy them. You can rip them onto a Plex server or you can watch them on a disc. Oh, I've done that. Um, see, The Boys. The Boys is one of my favourite TV series. It's That's one of the best TV series to, to be made, in my opinion, in a long time. And The Boys is on um, Amazon here, uh, Amazon Video. And it's... I love it. love that series. Um, Enzo, thank you for joining, and uh, see you later. Uh, so... Just checking. Do 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 do. I should set up a Plex server. Yes, you should. Everyone should. Plex servers are fantastic. Just love them. I, I mean, the thing is that I used to have this um, bookshelf full of all my Blu-rays. <laughs> Stacks of them there. And then when you're going to go watch something, you go up and you stand there and you look at them and you look at them and you look at them. When you have them on a Plex server, they just come up like a streaming service with the covers there and the name. And then you can click on them. You can have a look at the, like the Rotten Tomatoes review. And then you can order them in genres and stuff. And they tell you what actors are in them and all that sort of stuff. It's just a brilliant service to have. This works. This works. Um, I don't need to do anything else to it because it works. I do actually need to replace these axial scopascaders. So I may as well do that and then we'll finish it. We'll be done. We'll be done like a dinner. Un, dos, tres, cuatro. At least we know that the power supply works because this computer works. Um, so there. Let's whip off these. Uh, so that's what I, how I remove them. I just snip them off and then I grab the soldering iron and remove the pins. And so, yeah, so I actually pay. Um, I pay a subscription for Plex. It's not much. Or is it a one-off fee? I'm not sure. Any. I pay for Plex. Uh, it just gives you a few little extra features. Um, and... Uh, and to be honest, I think they deserve the money because it is such a brilliant piece of software. I was introduced to it by, I think, Jay. Um, it's, you know, like, you've got to do a Plex. And so many eyes thought, yeah, no worries, I'll give that a try. And it was just so easy to set up. Come on, you little thing, you. He's going backwards. He's bent on the other side. Oh, you son of a thing. You, this one here is on a ground plane. It's not getting hot. I'm going to wrap it in a bit of solder. I should get these from the other side. 
uh, clearly bent over. Beep, 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 Da da da. Skibbity boop a doo. Anyone hear the siren there? I don't know if it's a policey or an ambulance. Probably police. There's one little pin. Two little pins. Ah, ah, ah. Right, let's suck some of this solder out, shall we? Suck it. There we go. Nice little hole there. This one won't be as easy because it's on a ground plane. It's going to be a lot of trouble getting this solder out, but we're going to give it a try anyway. Nearly. Ah, oh, look at that Michael Mullen. Hello there. Welcome to the live stream. We are actually very, very close to finished. I apologise. It's not you. Um, it's uh, I have been going at this for quite some time now. And... I uh, just wanted to get to a certain point before uh, finishing up today. Mm -mm. Uh, I'm going to need my uh, things. Just excuse me while I get my things. Ugh. My needles, solder needles. Uh, won't use hot air. Right, all right, so I need to poke a hole in here. I'm going to use my um, solder needles. Uh, this stainless steel solder doesn't stick to it. I'm going to try and get this hot, and then I'm going to try and poke a hole through, and that will push the solder out of the way. Uh, it's easier to do it from the other side and then use hot air. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. So I flip him over, there's the hole. Get him to focus. Put some heat. You know, the other thing I love about Plex is the fact that you have the app on your iPad, you have the app on your phone, whatever, and you can just watch your stuff anywhere. Take your headphones with you. You want to watch a TV series while you're at the doctor's? If it's on your Plex, there you can just watch it. How cool is that? How is that even possible? There you go. Right, so there we've got the poke the hole through the hole there with the hole. Too lazy to set it up. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I loved setting up my Plex server. It was a fun job for me because it was going through all my DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff and getting stuff together and making this collection up and things and I don't know why I'm talking like this. And uh, so, yeah, it was actually a really pleasant job, I thought. Oh my god, look how bent these pins are. Who made, it was with the, was it the work experience kid that made this 2CI? Look at these bent pins. Look at
Oh, piss off. Not you guys. I'm talking about the little pin that was still stuck to my soldering iron. You guys are welcome to stay. I commend you for staying. I can get that one from the other side. And get these ones from this side. Anyone got anything interesting happening on the weekend? <clears throat> this is what I'm doing on the weekend. Repairing computers. I can't do much, I can't go anywhere because I am in COVID isolation. I'm not allowed. I'll get in trouble. Father's Day tomorrow, barbecue. Yes, so I, um, my father is dead, so we will not be having Father's Day. Um, passed away from cancer, lung cancer. Um, but having said that, even if he was still alive, we didn't actually celebrate Father's Day. Uh, and the main reason we didn't do it was because we just felt it was a little bit too commercialised, so we would uh, we would regularly catch up and have family barbecues and stuff like that. So it sort of didn't really seem necessary to go and say, "Oh, okay, we're going to do it on this day because we're supposed to do it on this day and buy things for him." And that. same with Mother's Day. If I say Happy Mother's Day to my mother, she blows me a raspberry. She goes, "He <laughs> really does not like the whole concept." Of Mother's Day and Father's Day, so yeah, we don't really do that. <laughs> Father's Day is just an excuse to drink more baddies. I don't need an excuse, um, in particular with today being a Saturday. I think the excuse I will use is it's Saturday. I have to admit, I am hoping to expand my computer collection. Um, thanks, it, it will be to uh, Apple's Anonymous, who is in the chat here. Uh, guys, if you haven't uh, seen his video, um, you should go check it out. Uh, I think I've made you a, I think you're a mod, aren't you? So you can post a link to that if you would like, um, of you going through your, um, uh, uh, it's mainly Mac 2s, aren't they? Mac 2, 2Xs, 2FXs. Um, you know, sort of post a link if you would like. Um, yeah, so I have been sort of saying, oh, I want this in my collection, I want that in my collection. And anyhow, Apple's Anonymous, then I don't know if you want me to use your real name or not, I'll just keep calling you Apple's Anonymous. Um, uh, he basically uh, contacted me and said, um, you know, I've got a lot of these things that you want in your collection. And so we're going to try and work out some sort of deal. I'll probably do some recapping and repair work. And in return, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably also have to pay some dollars as well. Don't know how much. I mean, I, uh, I believe he's quite reasonable. Um, which video? Which video? Well, you take your pick. Just uh, helping to uh, promote it. Which, which video do you want people to watch? That's the question for you. Ah. Okay, so. So Nick is okay with me calling him Nick. We've got uh, three 470s and a 220. So let's go and grab some axial caps here. And then we can consider this one recapped. Ooh. Ah. E. Ooh. Okay, so what did I say again? I said 470s. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, 70s. 
And then what was the other one we needed? 220. What's that one? 10. 220. <clears throat> yes, the Mac 2 videos. Be warned though, when you are watching those Mac 2 videos, have your hand on the volume control because every time Nick slams the case back on there, it blows your brains out. Um, where's my thing? I dropped it the other day and I didn't bother picking it up, so it's probably still on the floor. Hello thing. Or maybe I did pick it up. Stranger things have happened. Maybe I picked it up and didn't realize I picked it up. Where are you, thing? Or did I kick it? I might have kicked it and hidden it somewhere. I might never find it again. Oh well. Right. Goodbye, thing. All right, so let's get some caps in here. We have a little guy. Where's the little guy? Hey, come on. There, there's a the little guy is here. So we're going to... <laughs> One of my friends loves those Mac slaps. <laughs> Snaps. Smacks? Snack? Smack? Yeah. When they... Uh, there you go, bang. Okay, here's one capacitor. Uh, I really need to stick my goggles on for this. I can't see anything. Let's go top view. So you guys can see a little bit more. So we say hello to the chickens? Hello, oh, there's no chickens, just a pigeon. And another pigeon. Uh, minus goes that way. Oh, I might as well just solder it on. It'll be too hard if I don't. Two to X, two effects part two. There we go. And to 2x, 2fx, part one. I have watched them both. Nice seeing them when they do come alive. You had one blow up, didn't you? I think, from memory. Nick, I think at one stage, um, something went pop. It's funny when I have some people come onto the channel here and they have their alias and they contact me, you know, about stuff and I chat to them and they tell me what their name is and, um, but then they don't want me to say what their real name is when I'm doing on a live stream. And it's fine, you know, but I just need to check with everyone first because I don't want to do wrong by anyone. Uh, there's one person in particular who... Uh, I've said, do you want me to use your real name? Like, no, I do not. Okay. Okay. See if that's good enough. Name is in my video with my face. There you go. 
See, that's my attitude as well. wondering what those thudding noises are. They are figs falling from a fig tree and onto the roof of my shed going thudderoony. We're very nearly finished, so if anyone is sitting here going, oh my God, I wish this thing were just finished so I can go and make myself a cup of tea or something like that. Uh, I am nearly finished. I am very nearly finished. I've got one more cap to put on. I'm gonna neaten these up a little bit because they're a bit skew-with. But, uh, One more cap. One more cap. There it is. Don't really like my voice nor my face. Well, you won't, well you're not the only one that feels that way. I have to admit um, that... Um, I, the only... Re I mean, I would probably do the same. I would probably not put my face on things uh, other than the fact that I don't particularly like videos when people don't put their face on and so I'm sort of like well if I don't like it then I really probably shouldn't do it so that's that's why you guys get margly mug because of standards and of course voices are, are, is one of those things where, you know, I don't think anyone likes the sound of their voice when they hear it recorded. I'm so used to mine now because I've just heard it so many times it doesn't bother me at all, but it used to bother me. I used to hear my voice and go, oh my God, that sounds terrible. Now I just, it's just my voice. It just To me, it just sounds like how my voice sounds. Um, but it didn't used to. That was something that happened with time. It happened with me just hearing my voice recorded so often because I'm recording my voice all the time because even before I started doing these videos um, I used to do uh, other videos and I used to do voiceovers and stuff um, and so yeah I'd hear my voice all the freaking time okay well they're all around the right way so we're done there is a beautifully recapped, beautifully, beautifully recapped 2CI that we know works because we switched it on at Chimed. We've got another one that doesn't work. And it, of course, I should mention it did not work before. It didn't work um, before recapping, and now it does. So everyone's happy. And um, the other 2CI I've got is not working, but I've got a, a little bit of work to do with that. Got to sort things out. So let's just see how the chickens are going. Oh, they're all, I can see them all, they're off in the background there. There's the, the black ones up there, up there, up there. So, time for me to sign off after, ooh, three hours of live streaming. Crikey, and I am hungry. Um, Just checking the chat here. All right, okay, well, I think I'm probably uh, going to finish up now because I am very hungry and I am cold and the weather's miserable and it's time for me to go inside and eat and get warm. Um, so, there we go. Jeez, I'm getting a bit bushy, aren't I? Um, thank you, everyone. 
Thank you for joining. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for keeping me company. Just a little reminder about our sponsors. We've got Kai Wheat's KM601 Digital Multimeter. Link in the description. You will also find a link in the description for Clean My Mac X. If you are a Mac user, and in particular if you're a Mac user that's trying to get as much life out of an older computer as possible, Clean My Mac X is the way to go. You can install that on there and you'll, uh, you'll, your old computer will be flying. It'll feel like a new one. So, uh, yeah. So anyhow, thank you everyone. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you at the next stream. I may do another one this weekend. We'll just have to see how we go. As I say, I'm in kind of uh, COVID isolation at the moment, so I can't do much. So, uh, and I'm going to be repairing computers. So. All right, uh, let's find the little button. Here we are, here's the button. Um, I will probably bring the chook live stream back now that's finished i can't chook stream and do this live stream at the same time so i'll probably when finish this one bring the chooks back on my other channel um so uh yeah all right have a good one thanks again and i'll see you next time bye, -bye.